picture? No, just kidding. But, you know, it, if you think about Christianity as bland and boring and you're just here waiting for Jesus to come back and get you out of here, I'm hoping to change your mind about that. Okay, so when I say compounding revelation, that was a, a term that he gave me this week while I was preparing that I had never heard before. So I wanted to make sure, you know, does it even make sense? Can I back this up scripturally? And, and usually, if it's him telling you the thing, you, yes, you can back it up. And that's what I'm going to try to do to help you see it. So the, the text verse about the God of glory comes from Acts chapter 7. And you might remember Stephen, who was an early apostle that, the God, that God used, uh, not one of the 12 disciples, but somebody who was a devoted follower of Christ and became the first martyr. Acts chapter 7 talks about his defense right before he was taken as the first martyr that we read about. The high priest on, on trial says to Stephen, are these things so? Basically, they were accusing him, similar to Jesus, of blaspheming and saying that he needed to be put to death because uh, he was blaspheming. And that's another day's sermon. But they asked him, are these things so? And Stephen said, brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. So that's where the, the biblical term, the God of glory, comes from. I thought maybe for, I'm in finance, so maybe you've heard about compound interest versus simple interest. Bear with me, I won't, I won't belabor this analogy. But compounding interest versus simple interest. So let's just say you had a million bucks. Say it, I have a million bucks. Might as well say it. What? No harm. And what if I could get 7% interest, simple interest, for 20 years? All right? That means I would get $70,000 a year for 20 years, which would add up to $1.4 million. Plus, I would have had that original million. That would be $2.4 million. But I know you'll take it, but wait for the rest of the story. <laughs> but what if I had a million dollars at 7% and I got compound interest? That's a different story. Those of you that are in finance would know this. Albert Einstein, it's attributed to him, he can't prove it, said that it's one of the wonders of the world, compound interest. So you can look into that yourself if you want. That would come out to 3.8 million. So you would have doubled your return from 2.4 to 3.8. That's an extra 1.4. Pretty good. And, you know, being from around here, people say, so what? Like, what's that got to do with anything? I'm in church. Read scripture. Well, which one would you want, simple or compound? Try to keep the questions easy, all right? So you would definitely want the compound interest, right? So Holy Spirit, what we're about to celebrate on Pentecost is a really big deal. When Jesus took his blood, remember, he said, don't touch me. I have not, not yet ascended to the Father. He was bringing his blood to the mercy seat in heaven. And that finished the act of redemption. And now on Pentecost, Holy Spirit is released to the whole earth. I've poured out my spirit on all flesh. Think about that. Those people going into the abortion clinic, they're all flesh. There's, it's in there. They just haven't activated it yet. Their spirits are dead, but he poured out his spirit on all flesh. So when they come in contact with life, something sparks on the inside. And one waters, God gives the increase. You plant another waters, God gives the increase. We can't get hung up about, well, I didn't lead them to the Lord. Well, you might have gotten them closer. You're not. Put that on yourself. So I say the Holy Spirit is the hinge point here. Taking God's word from just simply interesting, simple interest, to compounding revelation. You got it. <laughs> and when we first came out here, Trisha could testify to this. A lot of people found the Bible simply interesting. <laughs> like, like they would read it, and they would go to church, and it would be like an hour, and they weren't really expected much, to be honest. But it was part of the thing, and they would go to church, and I mean, you know, they might have been had said a prayer to be, become born again, but it wasn't a vibrant part of the 168 hours of every week that they had. It was an hour on Sunday, and if you went more than an hour, they didn't like that. Well, you could be simply interested if you want, but I want compound revelation, okay? Like, this is way too important because just like the money is earning interest on itself in compounding, revelation continues when you stay plugged in. But if you're wishy-washy, and boy, think of all the ways as a pastor, 
that you might imagine that you would try to keep people encouraged to stay hot for the word. Because we know it says, don't be lukewarm. That's an easy one we all remember. When we first came out here, we met pastors' kids. I'd be in a Bible study, and we would just be talking over coffee, and they'd say, oh, yeah, my dad was a pastor. And we had to move every three years because he ran out of sermons. I met three different people. They all said three years. I don't know what it is about three years. What? See, that's simple interest versus compounding revelation. I went through my, my barrel of sermons, and now I have to go to another church where they've never heard me before. There's nothing about Scripture that would say that's the right way to do anything. It's Revelation is in the moment. That's what this whole school of the prophets has been about, right? It's God speaks to you because he loves you. He's a good father. So this is when Stephen said the God of glory spoke to our father Abraham. The word there is doxa, which implies increasing revelation. The glory of God is so rich that every time you're in that presence of God, you get an upgrade. Your spirit gets an upgrade. You still have the choice to go back to the pigsty, unfortunately. That's part of the wrestling with God that we all do for the rest of our lives while we're here. The world does look appealing. The enemy is a really good liar. We do get discouraged like the word came out this morning. Nobody's asking you to be perfect or, or to, to lie. And, you know, if we say, how are things going? And, well, do you really want to know? <laughs> yeah, honestly, we do. Because if, if things aren't going well, we want to pray with you. That's what we're all supposed to be saying to each other. But we're here to help each other because if I'm under attack from something, I want you to pray with me too. You know that expression, how are you doing? Well, under the circumstances. And you could say, what are you doing under there? <laughs> so how can I live my life with compounding revelation? Well, first of all, it really helps if you're in a church where they believe this. And that we're not just here biding time and waiting for Jesus to come back and get us out of here. But we're about our Father's business. And our goal is to try to help you find out what you were made for. And then empower you to live it. Because when you're in that place, it's a fun life. You wake up every morning and say, God, I'm really excited about what you're going to do through me today on your behalf. I don't know why everybody doesn't look at it that way. But I can tell you that. When we first came out here, the people that were simply interested, they were Christians, they had read their Bible, but they weren't like really deep into it. Then they met my wife. <laughs> I love this picture <laughs> when she was preaching. And, and the title of this particular message was, Your Beggar's License Expired at the Cross. And she was talking about blind Bartimaeus. And he wasn't just sitting there, and they said, Shh. Don't bother the master. Jesus, son of David. Right? So if you want to be simply interested, go ahead. Not us. Not what we're looking for. And these women, mostly that she was teaching Bible studies to, they were very educated. But they had never been, no fuse for passion for God had ever been lit until they met Trish. What a gift. Wow. What a gift to meet somebody who's on fire for God and they're contagious and then you get to be on fire for God. 